and welcome back to video number six. Um, in today's video you'll see how we produce our own electricity for the farm. I think it's a very fitting video this week as we seem to be one of the only spots in Northern Ireland or close to me that got an awful lot of rain at the start of the week. But as they say, every cloud has a silver lining. So in 2016 we installed a 20 kilowatt micro hydroelectric water turbine. This generates um, electricity for the farm using water that runs in a stream um, through our farm. We are up here at the weir, um, the inlet of the water turbine. I will talk about the burn the whole way through this. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't talk about it as a burn, but it just is the first word, that's kind of the word we always use. Um, probably like one of those things, I remember a couple of years ago, I went to get vice, vice scripts, but we call them vice scripts. Wrong word, a B instead of a V, but since I've always called it that, I find it well hard to change and actually call it the proper word. So I'll blame my father for that one. Um, but yeah, so a burn's just a stream. Um, we have this pipe and it goes down through the whole yard, you know, straight through there. Um, and the first shed that you can see, if I just zoom in there, um, it goes to the left hand side of that and it actually crosses the road and then goes down to the turbine. There's about 930 meters distance between here and there. It's actually the fall that has as much to do with the, uh, electricity being generated as um, the flow of water. So a welly test of how deep it is. You can see, sort of mine, my wellies, not too deep, but there's times um, the way we get stuck with leaves, you know, different things that come down the burn. But um, so we need to brush it a few times, and there's times that the brush or you could be away with it, just depending on the level of water that actually goes down the burn. So this is the weir, the water enters in through it, and then we come in here. See the water goes in, and then we have a pipe. Probably hard to see at the back of this wall, and it is the start of the black pipe that goes down through the ground. Um, and as I said, a full 36 meters to the turbine. That then, obviously, the speed that the water catches, then it's able to turn the turbine and generate electricity. So as you'll see, we were having a few problems with sticks being caught. Just like the ones in this video. Um, we do try and brush it when we can. But as I say, we made this slight modification. You can see the hole there. The things are getting stuck down the inside. So we just probably covered some surface area of it. But, um, Probably better that than sticks getting cut. Yeah. See the holes fell, so I'm not gonna take any credit for the water turbine. This was my dad's project and he did a lot of research into it and had me measuring water in the burn for I think a full year with a meter stick. Um don't wanna do that again. You can see it doesn't seem like that much water today, but it um it's still producing 8 kilowatts. Uh, this will probably be hard to hear because the motor's going on the back. But uh, having a few technical difficulties, so we're going to try and sort them out. The water turbine is only doing 1.3 kilowatts, but uh, it should be doing more. So I'm going to manually try and stop it. So I now have to go out and manually turn off the water um, so I can actually work at it. Uh, 
I do remember the man telling me they put it in the very first time I was going to turn the water off. Take a man with you. I'm not being sexist or anything, but you'll never get it off. And I like to remind him every time I get it turned off. There's two spear jets in it. This is number two, and this is number one. And um, whenever I take off the cover, you'll see the way it comes into like a spear jet. So each of these are called actuators. As you can see, you have something stuck in them that they're not actually opening or closing. So I'm going to open, put them both on manual and open them both up so that then I can try and clean them and take whatever sticks or whatever has got stuck in it. Part of the stack, I didn't get it all out, unfortunately. So that is the spear jet or the actuator. Um, it closes down uh, whenever it's obviously at zero and then would stop all the water. But whenever it's open fully, it comes in and it hits this wheel that I'm turning here, you can see. And then the wheel drives the motor to produce electricity for us. You can actually see with it just that bit of water, see the wheel starting to turn. So now back and the two of them, the actuators back to automatic. So I'm going to start it up. Go well, back outside and turn the water on. So it might have to turn it 54 turns off, but you also have to turn it 54 turns on. So here we go. Success, she's starting to generate. We have 0.7 kilowatts there. Um, last night it was doing up to I think it was 14.2 it was doing and we worked out yesterday there with the parlor going probably the time when we're using the most electricity um, we have two vacuum pumps going an air compressor for the gates a milk pump going on and off and then obviously the tank cooling at the same time so two compressors for it and we think we'd be using about with lights and different things like that at a maximum about 12 and a half kilowatts so it's great whenever this here water turbine can produce it all. I mean, I hate uh, rain as much as any dairy farmer, but um, you know, at least there's some silver linings to it. So that's her fully open now. Um, it'll take her a while to build up. She just obviously opens them slowly. But um, we have water in here. one kilowatt. So yeah, it just shows you the difference that a, a bit of twig can do to it. Um, and obviously affect the angle that the spear jet's coming in at. So we have the water turbine here and we have solar panels on that shed. The far side of that shed that you can see. So the two of them actually complement each other really well as obviously generally most of the time whenever the sun's shining the rain's not falling and um, so the two kind of complement each other to produce electricity for the farm. It's good that we can use the burn uh, it runs naturally through our farm and make the most of the lovely rainfall that we always get. So this would have been much better to show you whenever it was being done but I didn't do this in 2016. I think I have a few photos if I can try and find them I'll put them in but um, obviously not as many as I'd like.
So that is our silver line into the amount of rainwater that we get generating our own electricity. We do sell excess electricity onto the grid, but you roughly get paid a quarter of what you buy it for. Um, so it's definitely more economical to use the electricity you produce. Um, obviously, it's very difficult to control that as I can't control the weather, unfortunately. Um, so I'm hoping in years to come, there's a more efficient way of storing the energy we produce so we can use it during milking times and things when we use a lot of energy. Um, so we can buy less and less and use what we naturally produce here from these renewable resources.